Hi there, welcome to my studio. I'm going to be redoing the Fusing Argentium video that I did about three years ago. Uh, I sounded a bit like a rain man. I missed a lot of the key points that I wanted to make uh, because the process really goes so fast. So today I'm going to take my time. I'm going to uh, explain a lot before we get to the actual fusing. If I mention soldering during the video, ignore that. I'm not soldering. I'm strictly fusing. I'm not using any solder uh, and I'm also not using any flux with this process. So when I made my first Fusing Argentium video about three years ago and I got my first 100 hits, I was pretty excited thinking, wow, people are actually watching this. And then 3,000 hits in and I'm thinking to myself, hold on a second. Some instructors probably got their hands on this and are using it to teach their students what not to do, uh, i.e. the not fluxing when fusing and that sort of stuff. Anyways, it works for me. Follow what your instructor is telling you so that you get your A and your pass your course. And after that, you can be like me and question everything and develop your own techniques and way of doing things. So this technique works for me and uh, it will probably work for you as well. Argentium is probably one of the most forgiving metals out there, but it is also a temperamental little bitch to work with sometimes. Um, forgiving in the sense that if your joins are not 100% tight, it will bond to itself. Like I, I call it um, slump soldering, and I'll cover that in another video. It's actually pretty interesting to watch. Um, but you do not want to be touching it with your or prod it, prodding it with your soldering pick or picking it up with tweezers after it's red hot. Uh, it will crumble or crumple. It's 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 weird. Um, so sterling silver is uh, more. Well, it's traditional in that sense. It holds its, its shape, but if you pick up a red hot piece of uh, argentium, it just like literally disintegrates um, into pieces before your eyes, which is really heartbreaking and you want to avoid that at all costs but anyways uh don't be afraid of working with it just if you have been working with sterling silver it is not sterling silver so you need to just get that out of your head and uh, uh you know you're you're learning a new way of doing this and uh be a little bit more gentle with it when you're moving it and uh I hope that you'll enjoy uh, working with the Argentium as well too, either fusing or soldering. I'm going to uh, do another video on soldering and uh, hopefully break down some of these misconceptions about soldering. So with soldering, there's only one reason why the solder won't flow and that's that you don't have your torch set at a high enough heat or you're not working fast enough because your torch is not set at a not high enough heat. And so then, um, particularly with sterling silver, it'll start to oxidize. And the oxidization is what prevents solder flow. Uh, certainly uh, with argentium, you don't need to worry about that oxidization, um, but you, do, uh, you, you won't accomplish anything by heating it for uh, excessive periods of time. Um, so that's really the only thing to, um, really, you know, be mindful of with the Argentium silver is that, uh, like sterling, you need to heat it fast enough in order for it to fuse. You need to get it to that melting temperature, um, or just pre-melting temperature, uh, with fusing. So it's, it's a little bit trickier than soldering. The soldering is going to flow a lot faster than with, uh, with the fusing. Uh, so use optivizers or bifocals, get in there and uh, take a look. So here I have these components. Uh, they are going to be uh, fused together. I'm using some soldering aids, which is copper sheet. You want to uh, have it so that they're well supported. Wherever it's hanging over is, uh, it's likely to uh, what I call slump. So that piece that's overhanging will actually kind of double back on itself. And uh, so you want to avoid that by using a, a soldering prop like the copper. 
as I'm placing that underneath there. So it's a little bit elevated, but it doesn't matter. That's going to get cut off. And then um, the copper sheet, you can double that over or you can have it in uh, single thickness. Uh, copper is great for that. And uh, I also like using uh, washers, copper washers. So uh, copper washers or copper of anything works better than, uh, than steel because the steel acts as a heat sink. And there you can see that that copper uh, washer is the same height as the uh, sterling silver or the uh, argentium silver disc. And uh, steel acts as a heat sink, whereas copper doesn't. So that's why I like using copper. And I think that just about covers everything. We'll take a quick little break and be right back to do some fusing, not soldering. Again, if I mention soldering in the fusing video, just disregard everything that I say about soldering because we're fusing. All right. One thing I forgot to add is if you're using a blazer torch or a little mini torch, uh, like a chef's torch for doing creme brulee, make sure that it is full before you start fusing. Uh, if it's half full or quarter full, it does tend to lose heat. It's a weird thing about it. So fill it up before you start and you should be good. So I've got my little components all set up. This one in the distance here is not supported and these two are. And you'll see what happens when uh, it starts to heat up and melt. It will start to slump over because it's not being supported on that far end. And so um, sterling silver does not lose its shape like that. Sterling silver is uh, a lot more resilient, I suppose, to being moved or grabbed with um, with tweezers. If I were to use this on red hot argentium silver or even orange hot, it would crumble. It's, uh, it's quite interesting to watch actually. Maybe I'll do a, a video on the crumbling. Uh, Rhonda Coriel did a, a really good video on that back in the day on uh on argentine silver she picked up a sheet that was red hot and it just literally broke in half but the the nice thing is that you can actually fuse it back together again so great properties with the argentium so here we go just using a little blazer torch make sure that your torch is full when you start or before you start um oh there goes that piece you can see it's already starting to fall over and this far one here and just heating up the whole package, the soldering props, which is the copper and the argentium disc at the bottom and the components or little decorations. And now I'm concentrating on the argentium itself. And what I'm watching for is for it to become a kind of a, a bright orange. It's not going to be really visible with this light here. So I'm going to take this light out and then you'll probably be up. There you go. You can see that a lot better now. Okay, so it's getting bright orange. It hasn't gotten sparkly yet. And I am not wearing my Optivisors, which I'm kind of sad about right now because I can't really... Okay, I can see the surface is starting to get a bit shiny. So... I'm just going to call that good for now. I'm going to put my Optivisors on because uh, aging eyes, you don't really see as much as you used to. So, okay, I can see that it's not fused. So I'm going to go back at this. But what I don't want to do is overheat it to the point of uh, melting and puddling. Okay, so that's better. I can see what's going on now. So that lower piece is starting to get shiny and sparkly and I'm just being very careful with the torch here because I don't want to melt it. Okay so that one over here has almost fused. Okay, it's And I'm going to call that good. OK, 
Okay, so here's the moment of truth. We're gonna pick this up and hopefully everything comes with it, which it did. Okay, perfect. Now being careful not to burn myself on this hot station. So there's the piece. I'm just gonna zoom out so you can see the whole thing here. So the pieces are all fused together. There we go. Make sure by testing. Yeah, so it's good. So this piece here, right here, it ended up, you can see it slumped a little bit. It's not quite level, but not to the extent that I thought it would. These ones are all uh, sitting uh, well supported where the copper had been. And now I can clean these edges off. So I'm going to, maybe I'll just do that right now. Okay, you can watch my unconventional techniques of working with silver. So I'm just cutting cutting that off. Cutting that off. Kind of brutal. <laughs> Instead of all the finesse filing and so that's what it looks like there. Now it just needs to be filed on the edges and then it's it's done. I can turn that into a, a little earring, maybe mount a, a little gemstone in there or whatever. And that, my friends, is fusing Argentium. Any questions, please uh, do write a, uh, something in the comment below and I will be very happy to answer. And uh, good luck with your projects. And stay tuned for further uh, videos. As I had mentioned in my introductory video, I'm going to be doing uh, a video on making these little uh, water cast cut pieces. I've been getting quite a few uh, requests for these. They're really awesome. You can put little pearls or gemstones in there, fill them up with uh, enameling and uh, very, very simple to do and you get consistent results unlike with um, traditional water casting. This is, um, yeah, great little technique. Okay, so have a great day and hope to see you soon.